what's up guys welcome to trending reviews so if you're considering buying the google pixel 4 i'm going to give you five reasons why i think you shouldn't so starting off number one it doesn't come with a dedicated wide angle lens now i know they do a lot of software implementation to actually give you wide angle shots but if you wanted to get a dedicated purely solid wide angle picture a lens would be necessary and also to stay on par with the market right now where you have a lot of phones coming out with the triple cameras the iphone 11 you have the samsung s10 so all of these phones they have three lenses at the back with one being specifically the wide angle lens so it's a pretty big shame that they didn't come out with the wide angle lens because we kind of expected to have that from google but and nonetheless if you are a photographer and one of the reasons why you wanted to get the google pixel 4 was for wide angle shots then that could be a reason not to get it Number two, there is no more fingerprint scanner. So the Google Pixel 3 had a fingerprint scanner at the back. It was pretty useful and there's no in-screen fingerprint scanner as well, like a lot of the phones are now trying to perfect. So if you use a lot of banking apps, then the confirmation to log in via fingerprint has now gone. So what you have to do is revert back to using pin codes to actually bypass security. So those applications currently do not have any face unlock recognition to open the applications so that is a bit of a shame so you'd have to go back to using just the pin codes for pretty much every secure application you use number three if you're the type of person that takes a lot of videos and you do a lot of vlogging through your phones then the google pixel 4 does not have 4k recording at 60 frames per second a lot of the other phones on the market are going down that route and they do have that as standard so it's a pretty big shame it does have 4k at 30 frames per second but I wouldn't have expected it to be that difficult for something Google to implement, but nonetheless, it does not have that. Number four, the uh, screen to body ratio is only about 81%. That is because of the big forehead and the chin at the bottom. So it's not completely bezel-less like a lot of the phones are now going. So for example, like the OnePlus 7, it's you know full edge to edge screen. The Samsung S10 Plus does a little bit better of a job than that. So the design wise, I think it's very good to have the matte finish. I really like that. It doesn't leave any fingerprints on the back when you're using it like a glossy finish. But when you're watching videos, the one thing I would find annoying is if you see here, because of the big chin and the forehead, you can see one side of the screen is actually a lot more black space than the other side. Even if you try to zoom in, it's still unbalanced. So if you're watching YouTube or you're watching Netflix, then this could be a little bit annoying sometimes. You like to have the ratio of the screen to be equal on both sides. So either full screen, we have the same amount of black space on both sides or the lack of black space on both sides, but you won't get that with this phone. So it's a bit of a shame. Your TV shows or movies that you watch on your phone, the viewing experience will be slightly different if you are used to having equal gaps on both sides of the video. And number five is the motion sense. Now, I know this is a new technology and it is in early stages. Now, I find that it's not as smooth as they've advertised it to be. So I've opened up Spotify here. If I wanted to skip to the next song, I can just wave my hand over it. Now, sometimes it works fine, but sometimes it doesn't work. And it also depends on the lighting conditions of your environment. So right now, as you can see, I'm swiping. Nothing is happening. There you go, it's happened now. I've switched songs. Right now, it's, it's not working that well. The light is stuck now for the motion sense, so it's not completely moving and now it's active again. So you can see, I have to do it a couple of times. I'm trying to go the other way and it's actually going the opposite way. So it's not faultless. I think it'll be a lot easier for me to just do it myself manually, just quickly swipe through. And I think it's early stages. If you are driving, I can see that being useful if you have Spotify maybe next to your steering wheel and you wanted to wave for the next song. That's provided if your steering wheel doesn't allow you to skip songs without the actual buttons to do that. But nonetheless, I'm not really sure what other reasons you might use it for. If you wake up in the morning and you have the alarm ringing, you can wave over it to stop the alarm. I guess that might be the only useful aspect of this. So I will try that out and I'll give you guys some feedback on my Instagram for that. So those are my top five reasons of why you shouldn't buy the Google Pixel 4. If there's any other reasons that you guys have come across, then do let me know in the comments below. I think in terms of the battery life, that's one other thing that I've seen people talk about. The Google Pixel 4 is a lot lower battery than a lot of the industry standard ones. The XL is much better, but if you're using heavy usage apps throughout the day, I think you're gonna have to charge it at least a couple of times a day. So not the best battery life, especially when you have a 90 Hertz refresh screen rate. So that's everything I wanted to show you guys. If there's anything else you'd like to know about the Google Pixel 4, then do let me know. Otherwise, I have some awesome reviews coming up with this. I'm gonna do the astrophotography, some comparisons with other phones and other videos that I know you're really gonna like. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you won't miss that one. And I will catch you guys next time. Take care.